my govanen. Welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and in this video I want to talk about a theme in the story of Baron and Luthien, alternatively titled The Lay of Lathion, which in Elvish translates to Release from Bondage, and that, of course, is the theme that I want to discuss. Tolkien names it this very deliberately, and it's very much a part of the story because there are multiple instances where somebody is freed either literally or figuratively from some kind of entrapment, imprisonment, whatever you want to call it, depending on the situation. So let's take a look at how this theme plays out in the story. The earliest hint at this kind of theme in the story is actually a very negative connotation because Baron's whole adventure gets kicked off when his father and companions are killed after they are betrayed by one of their own named Borlas, who gives them away when he is caught by Sauron and thinking that his wife is also imprisoned, says, I'll tell you where my companions are if you will free my wife and me. So We've already got this theme going, but it's off to a bad start because Borlas gives them away in exchange for a freedom he'll never obtain, and Sauron, as a result, basically just ends up killing him and says, you can be with your wife. She's already dead, so if I kill you too, you'll be with your wife. So instead of freeing him physically from, you know, being a prisoner and his wife, he frees him from his mortal coil. After the betrayal, of course, Baron survives because he's off doing something else. He eventually recaptures the ring that Barahir, his father, had been given by Finrod Felagund, and over time is narrowed down to an ever smaller and smaller territory to the point where he has to escape, or he's going to be captured and he doesn't want that to happen. So he eventually flees his homeland, which is in itself a form of release, because he's about to be trapped, and he travels through the Gorgoroth and the mountains of terror and the forests in the valleys there, and there's spiders, and so he has to escape all of that as well, which is in itself kind of another form of release, because there's really no way he should have gotten through there alive. Then he finally comes to Doriath, and Doriath is the land of the fence. That's the meaning of the name, and the reason is because Melian has a magical barrier around it, basically, that prevents anybody from getting in. You become confused, you lose your way. Nobody gets in without Melian's consent. However, she has foretold previously that one will come whose fate is stronger than my ability to keep him out. And, of course, that's Baron. So Baron escapes the mazes of Doriath and comes into the center of the realm. Another kind of release, in a way. These are all kind of weak versions of the theme, but they come one after another. So it's really interesting, and they all have kind of the same feel to them. He's escaping an area or something that's going on in that area to get somewhere else. The next major element of the theme, however, is when he sees Luthien for the first time. And when he sees Luthien, he's just enchanted. There's really no other way to put it. He can't speak. He can't... In fact, he's rooted to the spot for quite a while. And only after Luthien leaves is he able to move again. And then when only when he sees her again in the next spring after the winter has passed is he finally able to speak again, and he calls out Tenuviel, calling her Nightingale in Elvish. And, of course, here his, his tongue is being loosed, another kind of imprisonment, and he's released from the enchantment, which is ironic because whenever he catches up to her and touches her hand, she also is kind of entranced in her, in her own way, and it's at that point that the story tells us her doom was sealed. So it's actually kind of a reversal of the theme in that she is now trapped, in a sense. She's not been released. She has been captured, in a way. So a really interesting twist on the theme, which follows immediately on the heels of Baron being released from the spell that bound his tongue, which, not a literal spell, but, you know, figuratively speaking. Baron eventually, of course, is brought before Luthien's father, Thingol, who 
in all honesty, would like to just off with his head and release him from his mortal coil. However, that doesn't happen because Luthien had previously made him promise not to kill him. Uh, he does threaten to imprison him. Luthien kind of talks him out of this too, and Baron, you know, tells Thingol what he wants is to marry Luthien, and Thingol is enraged. And so he finds what he thinks is a clever way of making sure that and this never happens, and he says, okay, get me a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. And Baron's like, oh, you're just going to trade me your daughter for a gem? Cool. I'm all up for that. And Baron is thereby released from, you know, all or not exactly released, because he was never technically imprisoned, but it was about that close. So there's a form of release there. Now, interestingly enough, after he leaves, Luthien decides that she wants to go and help him because she has this sense of foreboding that he's going to need her help. And he wants to, she wants to follow him, but Thingol won't let her do that, and so he puts her up in a treehouse where she can't, you know, go anywhere. And she eventually escapes by magically making her hair grow really long, and her hair apparently puts people to sleep, and so it puts the guards at the foot of the tree to sleep, and she uses her really long hair like Rapunzel to climb herself out of the tree. So she is released from her own prison by herself, which is really impressive. Luthien, in fact, is the most impressive character in this entire story because she does all the heavy lifting. At any rate, she escapes there and then is met by two of the sons of Feanor who are currently living in Nargothrond, which is exactly where Baron had already gone to turn in the ring of Barahir favor to get Finrod Felagun to help him out in his quest to get Silmaril. And so Finrod is actually trapped in the fate of Baron and therefore unreleased from his oath. As a result, Finrod ends up going with Baron and several other elves to try to recover the Silmaril, but is caught at Sauron's fortress when he discovers that they're trying to pass by, and Finrod ends up in a magical song contest with Sauron in which he tries to conceal their identity, and Sauron gets past that and eventually imprisons them, not being quite sure who they are or what they're up to, but he puts them in a dungeon where werewolves eat them one by one until Finrod finally comes along and manages to break free of his bonds. There's another release from bondage uh, when the werewolf comes for Baron and has a fight with the werewolf, kills the werewolf, but in the process he himself dies and saves Baron. But going back to Luthien, Luthien meets two of the sons of Feanor who have basically kind of started to run things in Nargothrond after Felagun's departure, even though his brother technically is king. And they take her back to Nargothrond and keep her there by force. But then Huon, the dog, the hound of Valinor, who is belongs to one of the two brothers, you know, breaks kind of the dog-like loyalty that he has and releases Luthien from the dungeons of Nargothrond. And therefore she ends up going with Huon to Sauron's fortress, which used to be an elvish fortress, which belonged to Finrod Felagund. How about that? Uh, and they end up forcing Sauron out. He transforms himself into a werewolf to try to kill Huon in pursuance of a prophecy, but at any rate, Huon wins, and then Luthien forces him to release this, the fortress from his magical hold, and thereby releases Baron. So he's released again, and as a result, they release Sauron, not necessarily the most positive outcome of a releasing in this entire story, but, you know, a deal's a deal, I guess. So anyway, they release Baron and the fortress, and the fortress actually becomes green again and is never really taken over by evil again. So another form of release, after several other events transpire, in which I don't remember there being any significant release thematic things happening, they both end up going to Morgoth's fortress at Angband, and at the door he has placed the greatest werewolf ever because he's heard that Huon is out and about doing stuff, and so he's like, well, if he's going to die by the greatest werewolf ever, I'll go ahead and raise that puppy up, and literally from a puppy, uh, and have him guard my door. And so he does. Huon, however, does not come with Baron and Luthien, so that doesn't really help him much. Luthien throws her magic hair in Karkaroth's face, Karkaroth being the giant werewolf, and puts him to sleep. 
and interestingly enough, kind of puts it in terms of you know the narr- the narrator or or Luthien herself. I forget which. Basically, kind of puts it in terms of he's released for a time from the misery of his own existence. So another form of release in favor of another bad guy character, but in fairness, is it necessarily all his fault? Maybe not. So then, of course, Baron and Luthien go down into the dungeons of, well, not the dungeons per se, but down into the depths, which are probably all kind of dungeon-like anyway, of Morgoth's fortress, and there Luthien dances for Morgoth and eventually puts him to sleep, thus managing to escape a really nasty fate if he had just kept her and Baron there, not really knowing. She reveals who she is, but he never noticed Baron really so much. Uh, But at any rate, she puts him to sleep, and at that point, he's out, and Baron goes for the Silmaril, which he frees from Morgoth's crown, which is an iron crown, which, you know, typically iron is more of a thing that you make chains out of, not so much a crown, so... And that crown, by the way, will later be used as a collar around Morgoth's neck at the end of the whole thing. So, really interesting symbolism going on there. So he frees it from the crown, and then he tries to get a second one, and that one doesn't go well so well. And it kind of wakes Morgoth up, and they have to run out in a hurry. And then his hand gets bit off by Karkaroth, and unfortunately that hand contains the Silmaril. So now the Silmaril is stuck in the werewolf's belly. However, of course, the Silmaril is later freed from its prison when Huon and Karkaroth have a big fight in Doriath, at which point all of Doriath was out hunting the wolf anyway. And Huon and Karkaroth basically kill each other, and then the Silmaril is cut from his belly. Another form of release. So, unfortunately, Baron at this point is mortally wounded, and he dies. Luthien shortly after dies of sorrow as well, And both are, therefore, in the halls of Mondos, because men kind of go there temporarily until they go to wherever men go in the Silmarillion afterlife. Elves don't go anywhere else. They either go to the halls of Mondos and then are just released, you know, to be reborn or whatever happens to elves, however however it plays out, depending on the elf. So they're both in the halls of Mondos, and Luthien achieves arguably what is actually the most impressive feat of the entire story by moving Mondos to pity so much that he actually agrees, along with the rest of the Valar, to release her and Baron on the condition, of course, that she become mortal. She can either leave herself and remain immortal, or she can take Baron and then they both become mortal. Either way, the point being, she achieves release from the halls that are, you know, Mondos is supposed to be this implacable person. Like, you can't change his mind. He's stuck and he has no pity. But Luthien actually manages to turn him to pity so much that he releases them both from Mondos, which is a huge form of release. And, of course, after that, they're both mortal. Now, the significance of that is the fact that elves in the Silmarillion cosmology are bound to the fate of the world. Their their immortality is longevity equivalent to the the longevity of the Earth itself. It only lasts, as far as anybody knows, as long as the world lasts. Once the world is gone, as far as we know, elves cease to exist. And so, in becoming human, she act or not human, but you know, mortal, she actually is released from being stuck within the circles of Arda and is freed to go with Baron when they both eventually die outside the circles of Arda, which is an even bigger deal, though not an impressive feat in the way that being released from the halls of Mondos was. And to top everything off, at the end of the story, we get a scene where she and Baron come back to Doriath where Thingol has been kind of in a deep depression ever since she died, and when she comes back, his heart is lightened and he, you know, takes joy again. Melian, however, reads the fate that Luthien has chosen in her eyes, and she can see what's coming. But what happens is, after this brief reunion, Baron and Luthien leave Doriath again, free of care, 
free of you know worry. They go and live on their own way off to the east and seemingly you know have no cares or worries in the world. And this is a really interesting way to end the story because we started off with you know trying to achieve freedom on the part of you know somebody who wanted to free his wife but did it in a tried to achieve it by giving up his friends and you know doing a really bad thing to Baron kind of step by step getting more and more upward mobile in terms of where he could go by freeing himself from the confines of where he was living at the time to being cast under a spell of sorts freeing himself from that spell but thereby binding Luthien in his own fate and then Luthien having to free herself or be freed from a couple of different prisons so that she could free Baron from an even nastier prison and then eventually you know managing to get into the halls of Morgoth and then escape from there and then free the Silmaril ultimately and then free themselves from the halls of Mondos and free herself in a sense from the fate of elves such that she could be with Baron which mirrors back to that being trapped by his fate. This is like the culmination of that. And then they're free. They are truly free. They have been released. And everything that was really bad is behind them. And now they're free to live their lives, brief as they might be, you know, in the eyes of an immortal elf. And it's a really interesting, when you look at the whole thing, playing through how that theme kind of builds and builds and builds until finally the last bit of it is kind of touching on this like an aspect of the fact that they are now both free to be together potentially forever beyond the circles of Arda and because of that they are able to be free from worry free from care free from anxiety about things and the, they apparently just kind of live happy lives in the east part of Beleriand. It's really interesting to see that theme play through the way that it does, and that last little touch, even though it seems like a really minor thing, is kind of a beautiful capstone to the way it built up to this grandiose, you know, breaking the cosmological rules, so to speak, and it's just really fascinating how that plays. Now, there may be some other instances where the theme gets brought up in the story and of course there's multiple versions of the story there's the actual poem that he wrote which is the actual lay of Lathion and then there's the story as told in the Silmarillion and there's other versions that go back farther and stuff so there may be some even in there that I didn't bring up because they were less relevant to you know I'm trying to stick with the final versions of the story basically but if there are any others bring them up because the more we can add to this theme building uh, and show how it fits into that, the better. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of literary analysis and showing how Tolkien's theme of release really plays throughout the story of Barrett and Luthien. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up, share it around. You can also, of course, follow me on Twitter at JRRT Lore for some occasional Tolkien-related trivia questions. I also have an Odyssey and Rumble account where you can get the same videos, and I have podcast version of these now as well, which you can find on pretty much any podcast uh, platform at this point. And you can support me on Patreon. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for all the notifications if you want more content like this. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namariye.